So today I want to talk about another question that we see often from the communities that we're involved with in osteoporosis. And the question starts like this. I'm 38 years old. I'm a female. I have several autoimmune diseases and osteoporosis. Is osteoporosis reversible under the age of 40? Is it a death sentence? I'm so confused. Well, we hear this all the time. And let me just say this up front, that osteoporosis is reversible, but with what circumstances? At what age? Now, this particular person is quite young at 38 with osteoporosis, but has some existing conditions that are going to make it potentially more challenging. What I want to tell you is our experience after witnessing osteoporosis reversal in hundreds of individuals. So one of the primary things that we look at when we're discussing the plan for somebody with osteoporosis is we need to understand the trajectory of the disease. So is someone rapidly losing bone? Have they been stable for a long time? Are they actually improving and they just don't know it? There's so many emotions that go along with this that we really need to have very clear goals so that we can set aside the fear and the anxiety, but we also have to understand the reality. Age does play a part. What kind of drugs you're on for potentially autoimmune diseases like this particular person certainly could play a role. Comorbidities do play a role. I'm not looking to be a Debbie Downer here, but we do need to be realistic on who can reverse osteoporosis and who would probably be better served on a pharmaceutical. There are both sides to that equation. I see misunderstandings on both sides of that equation all the time. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to walk through a couple of different cases because misunderstanding on both sides of this can be equally detrimental, meaning that someone could have a clear opportunity to improve their bone naturally, but not believe it because they have been told otherwise by their doctor or by their peer group. And then they go on a drug that has potential risks and they're not going down the pathway that would provide them the natural solution. Or, and this is potentially worse, somebody who is unlikely to succeed with a natural approach, even if they could do all the things, but for whatever reason, they're unlikely to succeed because they require specific drugs or they're in a certain situation or their genetics or their whatever, and they stick their head in the sand and they say, well, my neighbor does it, this Facebook group told me not to do it, so I'm not gonna take the drugs, but actually, that person may should be on a drug. And so we need to understand that everybody's different Every case is different. Don't do what your neighbor's doing because they're your neighbor, okay? So I'm gonna walk through a couple of different cases here. So if you're in this boat and you're trying to figure out which side of this fence you wanna be on, stick around with me here. All right, so let's just take an example of somebody who is, these are all made up by the way, but somebody who's 38 years old. This is an early diagnosis. And I use this early of a diagnosis because this is the question uh, that, that we were looking at. But let's say somebody's 38 years old, they got diagnosed with whatever, and that led them to a screening test for osteoporosis. So they have osteoporosis, and we're gonna put the autoimmune disease equation on the side. We're just gonna hold that for later. But for someone who is 38 who is otherwise healthy, her options for osteoporosis reversal are wide open. Now, we have to be cautious with the severity of osteoporosis when it comes to resistance training and impact training, but outside of that, we just need to do all the things that we do, right? We need to go through the foundation. We need to go through the diet. We need to go through the gut health. We need to go through the resistance and the impact and start putting all those things in place. Do the supplements, talk about hormone and optimize those hormones, and then moving on northward from there. So this 38-year-old with an early diagnosis, while her doctor is probably gonna tell her to go on Fosamax, or reclassed, the truth is that she has a ton of options that she may want to consider first. And I said may, because not every 38-year-old is going to be in that situation. But let's take somebody who's a little bit older. Let's take somebody who's 78 years old. Now, we have plenty of patients in this category who are doing great naturally. But this is an age group where certain factors are to come into play. So let's say this 78-year-old is over 20 years out from menopause, probably 25 years or 28 years out from menopause, right? She has a personal history of cardiovascular disease, meaning that she's had a heart attack or she's had maybe a little stroke or she's had uh, just even evidence of severe disease in her coronary arteries, the arteries that feed blood to her heart. Let's say she has arthritis. Let's say she's had a previous fracture, spine fracture. She still has some pain. Gut doesn't work as well. Her diet's not very good. She's all kinds of inflamed on her lab work. What are her options? Well, she still has a lot of options, but they're limited. Right? So is she a candidate for HRT? 
Probably not. Maybe some, maybe some off-label progesterone, maybe testosterone if that's an option for her, but probably not going to start estrogen for her. It would probably be too risky from a cardiovascular perspective. Can she do resistance training? Limited, right? Her arthritis is going to potentially be an issue. Is she going to be able to load her bones enough? I don't know. We could try. Could she do impact? Probably some. Could she stand on a vibration plate? Probably some. Can she tolerate supplements? Maybe some, but not as much as that 38-year-old. Most people are going to be somewhere in between, right? So again, we have 78 year olds that are doing awesome. So don't think that age is actually what defines it. But most people think that way. I'm 60 years old. I'm too old. I'm 70 years old. I'm too old. I'm 80 years old. I'm too old. We have patients in their 80s that are doing awesome. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we likely to be able to do this on our own? And this is the question we answer for people all the time. People ask, can I do this without drugs? And usually the answer is yes but not always. I would say that person in the number two case is unlikely to be able to succeed substantially. Maybe they can slow down bone loss, which is still a win. But are they going to actually reverse osteoporosis? Probably not. Maybe with an anabolic drug. But then that person may actually end up needing to go on some of another drug. So everybody's different. We need to look at our goals realistically and strongly consider if you're not getting better and your labs are continuing to not get better, then you really need to consider what your options are when it comes to drug therapy and combining the two. It doesn't have to be one or the other. So let's talk about somebody in between. So let's talk about our kind of our standard patient in optimal human health. We have our 50 year old woman. She comes in and her gut doesn't really work very well. What do I mean by that? It means that she has probably maybe some constipation, maybe a little acid reflux. She can't eat adequate protein because it doesn't digest well. So she has what I would consider a poor diet, usually standard American diet, a lot of people coming in with that. She's been doing cardiovascular work, mostly chronic cardio, treadmill, Stairmaster, maybe she's a runner. She's under muscled and not on HRT because her doctor told her that she didn't have any hot flashes, so she didn't need it. Now, can this 50 year old reverse it? Probably. Probably. I think that she has an opportunity to improve her gut, improve her diet, start doing different training, start doing impact, start building muscle, and hopefully she's a candidate for HRT. If you start adding in all the different variables, what about autoimmunity? What about drugs? What about over-the-counter drugs? What about PPIs, steroids, antileptic drugs? What about SSRIs? What if I can't take estrogen? What if I don't need testosterone? The point is, is that every case is unique. So don't compare yourself to anyone else. Your case is your case. Follow our framework, the 4R framework, and create a program to help reverse your bone loss. And if you can't do it on your own or if you're struggling to do it on your own, make sure that you ask for help. That includes going to our master class, totally free, link for that in the description. If you've done that and you need more help, consider HealthSpan Nation. HealthSpan Nation is our community of individuals looking to improve bone health through the lens of HealthSpan. We talk about bone health, we talk about supplements, we talk about exercise, we talk about hormones. The community is supporting each other. And then we're doing weekly Zoom Q&As, uh, topic-driven Q&As to help drive the conversation forward in the community. We have a vault of content and we have discount codes for all of the services and products that we have vetted and provide to both HSN and our patients. So take a look at that if you're needing a little bit more support as well. So this was a video review of one of our most commonly asked questions uh, in our community. And if you like this, please consider this top three foods video and the top three supplements video. Remember that osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. I'll see you in the next video.